One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Can't you see? I'm in love with you. You have to sit cross legged like Steven. We're here at Summerhill Pyramid Winery, the most visited winery in Canada. We've been here for 35 years building a co-venture or a model of man and nature. There are many reasons that I left New York to come here. Uh, I had a wonderful family, uh, my wife Wendy and our four little boys. Um, and uh, we had a very successful uh, career and family life there. We, a marvelous life, really. And anyone would say, you're crazy to leave this. To look at, you had, you had the best of everything. And I felt very strongly that um, it seemed like we were always chasing our tails for money there. It's, it seemed like everybody we knew was just about talking about money and material things. And I felt that there was so much more to life. And one day, uh, our friend Mary from Edin Edinburgh came over and said, you know, my brother uh, was in Canada, in, in British Columbia in the Okanagan Valley and she told me that they grow vegetables and fruits and they could grow apples and pears and grapes. I said, you can grow grapes in Canada? <laughs> I said, what? I was on the next plane out the next day. I was introduced to this wonderful Okanagan Valley, 132 mile long lake that is 750 feet deep in parts. Totally pristine. You can literally swim along and drink the water. And there's mountains all around it, which, um, which protect it. And it's ideal for fruit growing. It's just an ideal growing condition. And there's zero industry here. The, the air is pure and, and fresh. Uh, the soil is virgin. And then it also um, opened up the opportunity for me to explore my sacred geometry yearnings. I, I've always been fascinated with ancient civilizations and, and sacred geometry and all those things. It feels like, you know, important work for humanity. I just think the way that we live on Earth and the way we treat the planet and the land is absolutely insane. So we try and be a little bastion of, uh, of sanity uh, and care and try and demonstrate what it looks like to, you know, be a part of your environment, to be a part of nature, to live as a part of nature. When we talk about um, the environment and how we live on the Earth, um, you know, it's not a uh, spin. We're doing things that no one else does. Uh, we're not only uh, organic with the grapes, but we're also organic certified in the cellar. Uh, and then, of course, we're biodynamic, certified in Germany uh, by Demeter, the highest uh, certification of organic in the world. And then we take it the next step, which no other winery has ever done, to my knowledge, which is to put the wines in sacred geometry with a precision pyramid fashioned after the Great Pyramid of Egypt. I started in the summer back in 2007. I was working at Panagol making pizzas. So he's like, Lee, you work in Panagol. I love pepperoni pizza. I'm like, great! And so I ended up having an interview with him. And so I started working here. I guess he liked me. Uh, he was a very nice guy. And then later on, I found out he's a uh, vegetarian. He doesn't even eat meat. Making wine is a mystery to most people. They have no idea how it goes from a grape to a glass. And they don't really understand what kind of work is behind it. Um, so I think it'd be neat for people to see what it actually takes, what the process is like, kind of some of the trials and tribulations, and, and why buying a handmade premium bottle of wine has value and what went into it. Yeah, we, uh, we measure people's foot size before we hire them to make sure they can, uh, they can stomp properly. <laughs> found a home here and, and it was weird because when I told a bunch of my friends who understand my personality and they know Steven's personality, they were almost like taking bets on how long it would last, um, us being like working together and, and, and it's, it's going on three years. For a little while I called my dad Steven but I, I abandoned that and now I call him dad uh, in business meetings, you know, whether it's with our team or with our employees or whatever. But you know, I. I do my best to treat him as a 
boss and to think of my, you know, he's the owner, he's the founder, I work for him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I give him that respect in addition to the respect I give him as, as my dad. Right. It's difficult to work for just about any boss that everybody's going to have their own quirks. And uh, he definitely has his. I mean, he is somebody who has a new idea every day, maybe even two or three a day. <laughs> and, and to work for him is to, you know, sometimes it feels like a, you get whiplash once in a while, you know, you're starting down a path and down a strategy and then suddenly there's a new idea and a new initiative. And it's pretty interesting because um, sometimes his ideas come from, you know, pretty deep insights. I mean, look, the guy's a visionary. He, uh, he moved from New York to the Okanagan and built a winery and built a pyramid when you know, there was 12 other wineries in the valleys. I wouldn't call those ideas crazy. It's just, you know, he sometimes comes out with a lot of ideas that we have never done before. Nobody have ever done before. But that doesn't mean it's crazy. It's doable. And that's why whenever he comes up with an idea, some people will say, no, it's not going to work. I say, how do you know? Because you've never done it before. And if you don't try, you, you don't know. Nobody else could have built a place like this. Uh, he is a visionary guy. He's an idiosyncratic guy. Steven's more visionary. Like yeah. he, he sees the vision and he wants to do things. But Ezra is more maybe about policy and whether we can make this happen. And he cares about the branding. If I had started a winery, I would never have built a pyramid. But they're very different. They sometimes disagree on things a lot, quite a bit. I might be a little bit more cynical than my dad is, just in my being, in my nature, you know? I don't like to make any kind of claims that, you know, you can't back up with uh, science. Yep. However, <laughs> I think the conversations that we're able to have and the ideas that we're able to explore are really valuable. Before I actually got here, you heard some of the stories about yep. Stevens, you know, being eccentric and, you know, he's a little bit different. On, on his birthday, um, there's 200 people here for it. It was the first time he met my kid and uh, my son was two at the time. My, my son was a little shy, so he's hiding behind my leg. Stephen went into his office, grabbed his little drum, sat on the floor and drummed with my kid for 15 minutes. People kept coming in to talk to me like, so-and-so is waiting for you, the mayor is here, this person's here. He's like, I'm busy. And at that moment, my kid was the most important person. It was really interesting because most millionaires and winery owners could care less about that, right? Even if there's some failure, I think that's okay. It's all right to be a little bit vulnerable and to be, uh, you know, to be open to failing. And you're inevitably going to make some mistakes. There's going to be some foibles along the way. You know, there's going to be challenges. But, uh, you know, it's, it's in the trying. Like, that's where the, the beauty is, you know. I think we'll have a lot of fun doing this. Maybe an inspiring uh, story to tell for people, you know, for people to watch. I think it'll, it'll be very exciting. Uh, it'll be revealing. It'll be embarrassing. I think they will be able to relate to us. Uh, I think they'll be able to see our struggles as their own. I think they'll be able to see our hopes and dreams and visions as their own. But I think it's going to be um, educational and fulfilling. I think their vision that's hopefully more or less universal, that a lot of people would like to see. And we're living it. We're doing it. So it's a good story to tell right now.